So, hey there. One of the um, greatest, one of the biggest questions we can ask ourselves in this life is not only questions about ourselves, but questions about where did everything come from? The origins of all matter, you know? Um, we were, I mean, we Christians were, were taught in Genesis that everything started from emptiness, okay? Um, it was just void, pitch black in this universe. And then slowly over time, there was these, God created a layer, layer effect of, of one creation over another. For example, we didn't have to have soil, right? A foundation, a planet, and then you have to have soil. And then you have to have water, air around it. Who puts that air there? Well, these questions are easy answer. Obviously, man, you have to ask, did man create it? No, in today's technology world, there's no man that's created another species. We have not proven that. We have not even witnessed that from scratch. And we haven't witnessed any man creating seeds. Second, then you have what's called a layer of animals and plant life over it. And then we have, right, over that foundation. And then there was man. Okay? So, who put that all there? Hmm? And today, as you know, the propagation of each of these pieces is self evident it's self evident through fertilization between the animals of one likeness and humans. So what if you it is obviously this is what is called the effect. We see the effect, we see the evidence. Undeniably, there's a layer of effect. Now, if it now what we need to see is what like, is the is the the layers are actually established. The authoritative source actually establishes that those layers have been uh, created in a specific order. So in Genesis, it says um, it talks about the creation of our universe, and it says. Um, in the beginning, uh, God created the heavens and earth. And that's very important. God is expressed as a singular, singular, not gods, singular, one God. Now the earth was formless and void and darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Um, earth had no form. It was empty, void. And God was hovering over the surface. I mean, God was like able to be present near the, the thing he was creating, which is quite interesting. The Spirit of God. And this gets into, that gets into, you know, the Trinity. God's in heaven. God's near uh, what he created. God can be anywhere. Omnipresent God. On the first day, God said, let there be light from darkness. So he called upon the light and, it, and the light just came out. God said the light was good and he separated the light from darkness. God called the light day. In the darkness he called night. What's interesting is that he called the light was good. Therefore, just like God, we want to be like, we want to love God, show respect. We call the light good. We like the light as well. It's good and it gives life. Look, at, without light, we would have so many problems in this world. Plant life would just life would just be gone on earth, right? And then there was evening and there was morning the first day. On the second day, God said, let there be 
expanse between the waters to separate waters from the waters. So God made the expanse, ex separate the waters beneath it from the waters above. And it was so, it was called the expanse sky. That makes sense from a scientific point. There are actually water molecules in our air and there's more densely populated water molecules in the ocean and in the lakes and the rivers. So that's what he was saying is that um, there's, there's a separation between two different water types, the air, water air, which has oxygen, and as you know, rain, clouds, from the densely populated water, which is like, you know, ocean where the fish are. And on the third day, God said, let their waters under the sky be gathered into one place so that the dry land may appear. And it was so, God called the dry land earth and the gathering of waters he called seas. God said it was good. Again, everything God does, he says it's good. Doesn't say it was bad. <laughs> so everything God created originally was good. Then God said, let the earth bring forth vegetation, seed bearing plants and fruit trees, each with bearing fruit with seed according to its kind. The earth produced vegetation, seed bearing plants according to their kinds, and tree bearing fruit according to their kind. And God said it was good. And there was evening, there was morning the third day. Now, some speculate these days are heavenly days, so they're not actually literally Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But a day in heaven is probably like uh, a different time. So this just an, an addendum there. Uh, that, that, uh, but there's some believe it is a 24-hour cycle. There's also some that believe this is a that this was over a period of a, a day, could have been a thousand years. Who knows? Um, so. Just, just shining up, but not. There's, there's some disagreement about that. Uh, and God said, "Let there be lights in the expanse of the sky, distinguish the day and the night, and let them be signs to mark the seasons and days and years, and let the serve, let them serve as lights in the expanse of the sky to shine upon earth." God made two great lights: the greater light to rule by day, and the lesser light to rule by night. He made the stars as well. What that means is, the sun is the greater light rules by day and the lesser light is is um the moon to rule the night you know and you know what hollywood is is made a mockery of this the moon right the the the, the wolf and stuff like that howls at the the moon no the light the moon is this is is god created to rule the night to give us light constantly light Actually, some people say that symbolic of uh, the greater light is um, symbolic of Jesus, his son, Jesus, to rule, you know, as a ruler. And the lesser light is the queen, of the, is Mary. You know, Jesus, the, the, the moon is reflected by this. I don't know if you know this, the moon is reflected by the greater light, scientifically. But I'm just, that's, that's just symbol, symbolic in nature, like representation of them. God set these lights in the expanse of the sea to shine upon the earth to preside over the day and the night to separate the light from darkness. And God said it was good. And it was evening and morning, the fourth day, the fifth day, let the waters teem with living creatures. So now the life in these, in earth and sea, starts to begin and on air. Birds fly by the earth, above the expanse of the sky. So God created the sea creatures, every living thing, and the moon and water team according to God. Every bird of flight is kind. God said it was good. And God blessed him and said, Be fruitful and multiply. And fill the waters of the seas. Let birds multiply on the earth. So the multiplication is scientifically evident. We are able to multiply through uh, fertilization. With between two different man, male and female. Not between man and man and female and female. That is not, doesn't say be fruitful and multiply. It's a be fruitful and multiply. If you're able to multiply, then, then multiply doesn't say anything about home you know those who cannot multiply now multiply only happens between opposite sexes okay <laughs> that's scientifically proven as well and he said it was good 
And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, livestock, land crawlers, beasts of the earth according to their kinds. God made the beasts of the earth according to their kind, livestock according to their kinds, and everything that crawls upon the earth. And God said it was good. Crawls upon the earth, insects, everything, cockroaches, everything, rats. But God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Now this is interesting. Then God says, Let us didn't say let me let us make man in our image after our likeness to rule over the fish and the seas and the birds of the air of the land and all over and every creature that calls upon it that's very interesting let us make let us is is a, is a pronoun for plurality that entails an ass, uh, assistance it's god's plan obviously he says let us make it's his plan but it looks like on this part, there's some help here. Um, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created him, them. God blessed him and said to him, Be fruitful and fill the earth and subdue it over the fish and the birds of the air and every creature that crawls upon it. Then God said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of all the earth. Every tree whose fruit contains seed, they will be yours for food. Every tree whose fruit contains a seed, you can eat. And to every beast and to the air, and every beast of the earth, everything has a breath of life in it. I give in every green plant for food. So when you eat, this is why we give thanks. Okay? When we eat, we give thanks to God because without this happening, Man would not be able to, without this plan, man could not be sustained on this planet. And God looked upon all that he made indeed. It was very good. So we get into Genesis 2. And I want to make my, uh, uh, we're going to get to the, the main part here. Where we can integrate science into credibility of this source. Thus the heavens and earth were complete in their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished his work. He has been doing so. On that day, he rested from all his work. On the seventh day, which is the Sabbath day, he rested. We are to do the same thing, by the way. Every seventh day, you're to rest, just as the Lord God rests. He tended that the man obey is the likeness of him and does what he wants. He's, a, he's an authoritative. He's a boss. He's the big boss of all bosses. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified, because on that day he rested from all the work of creation that he accomplished. Now this is the account of heavens and the earth when they were created in the day the Lord God made them. Now no shrub of the field had not yet appeared on the earth, nor any plant of the field sprouted, for the God had not yet set rain upon the earth, and there was no man to cultivate the ground. For springs welled up upon the earth, and watered the whole surface. Then the Lord God formed man from dust of the ground, and breathed of life, breath of life into his nostrils, and the man became a living man. So this is very interesting. Then God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed of now get into the scientific reason. You are we truly made of the earth? Dust means materials of the earth. And do we have breath inside of us? Yes, I want to get to this. It proves it scientifically. The human is approximately 99% comprised of six elements. Oxygen from the air, breath of life. Hydrogen is in the air. H2O, nitrogen is in the air. Carbon is in the earth. Carbon's everywhere in the rocks. Calcium's in rocks. And phosphorus. Another five elements make up the remaining as sulfur, potassium, salt, sodium, chlorine, magnesium. All these are earthly, earthly, planetarium, earthly planetarium materials that are inside each of us. So if anyone says this cannot be true, they actually don't understand. These words, because the, it's what's amazing is how simple it is, and yet if you get into the details of each of these, you 
come to believe this has to be true for two reasons not only because the composition of man is in line with that we come from the dust and the breath of life two the one reason the second reason man has not created any planets nor any tree or any biological existence in earth today they only use substances from pre-existing materials and create another thing in other, in other words like an automobile was created from material that God has put on earth and the reason why they have the ability to create things is because God is the creator himself and we are the likeness of God not only with our hands and our ways but in our, in, in we're like him so this is what so I'm done with this um Done with this, I just hope that you that when you're reading the Bible, you can come to the same conclusion I have that, that each of us that earth existence is good, the the plan of man of all existence is good. Nothing here is bad except there are some exceptions that we should not do. It's actually in another there are exceptions to the rule. Uh, but um but that's it for me. Um, uh, but all fruit is good and we are to thank God God really made this whole thing from the beginning of time okay it wasn't any alien it's already disclosed uh, peace out amen